What's up YouTube? Heavy coming to you. Captain Awesome's Fish Room. Jeffrey Chromis Bro Vibe bringing y'all another video today. Uh, trying to get back on a roll guys of bringing y'all regular videos uh, instead of like once a month. Normally I did like maybe one or no no no. At least two or three a week I, I seem to remember doing. For a while there I was doing every day. But um... Yeah, so today we're going to focus on the reef. Um, my fish room is an erratic mess right now. Uh, the 350 going on and, uh, you know, moving fish, this and that, and uh, breaking down all those tanks. So we're just going to take a look at the reef today, The right there you can see behind me. Um, uh, 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 we'll go over a few things I'm thinking about doing, a few things I've done. Um... I think I've gotten some new corals since the last time y'all seen a video. I want to say we've gotten some new coral corals. Uh, I'm also going to go over what I'm dosing right now. I'm using the Seachem Aqua Vitro line. Uh, I'm also using their salt too. Um, as y'all know, I work up at Fish Paradise, so I can get uh, Seachem Salinity uh, mixed for me up there, uh, and it's you know at a really good price too. That way I don't have to mix my own and, you know, go out and buy expensive RODI unit and stuff like that. Um, that's not to say eventually I won't, um, but at this point, uh, setting up the reef and getting it stocked with corals and stuff, it's, uh, it's going to be mainly corals. Um, I think, I, let's see, I'll have, there's only one more fish that I'm going to add to this system, and it's a Yasha Hasha, I don't ever say it right. Um, goby uh, and pistol shrimp pear. That's the that's the last uh, fish slash invertebrate. Well, maybe not the last invertebrate, but uh, it's the last fish that I'm going to add uh, along with his pistol shrimp. Um, I'll be getting that soon. Right now, I have the the two onyx picassos, uh, which are clownfish. Stop, Taco. Sorry, my dog. Uh, and then I have the two yellow clown gobies. Uh, the rest is just, um, you know, the cleanup crew. Uh, so I have a serpent star, a brittle star, and a sand sifting starfish. Uh, then, of course, I have uh, 20 or 30 blue leg hermits. Um, I think I have three to five Nasaria snails. And then I have three turbo snails. What else do I have? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, um, I have a, a, a Halloween Hermit. Uh, those are really cool. Really, really good at eating uh, diatom, all, all kinds of algae. Uh, it's, a really, it's a really cool Hermit Crab. Um, I think I showed him to you the last time I made a video. I'm not completely sure on that. Uh, but if he comes out, of course I'll show him to you. Um, I also, I have a filter coming, uh, so instead of filming with just the white light and the coral's not popping as much, uh, which I kind of like because, you know, in a natural ecosystem, the corals don't have, or don't look as vibrant as they do in, in aquariums, um, you know, uh, I've, I've been reading a lot and on reefs specifically and uh, like zoanthids for example some people have a hard time finding them out in reefs because all the vibrant colors we're used to seeing it doesn't happen in nature uh, it just doesn't they don't fluoresce the way they do in our aquariums uh, in the ocean um, and that's because you know we like the blue lights and the actinics and stuff like that and you know, it, it just makes the corals pop, which is great, you know, um, but for video purposes, you have to use the white light or it just doesn't come out very well. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered some film uh, that acts as a, uh, as a filter so I can have the blue lights as high as I want them and the corals will still have that pop, but you'll be able to see it without the, the fuzziness and the graininess that the blue brings. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that should come this week or next week, I'm not sure. Um, what else, what else? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, with the Seachem Salinity, 
Um, I actually switched to that right before my first water change. Uh, so I'll be doing another water change. I'm going to start, well, now that I'm dosing, uh, I don't know. I might stay with every other week water changes. Uh, I do 15 gallons at a time, uh, but I might go to every week. Um, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Uh, either way, it's not that expensive to do a water change. So uh, doing it every week wouldn't really matter. Um, the cool thing about, I came from Instant Ocean. Uh, that's what I set my tank up with. That's what we sell mostly at the store is Instant Ocean. Uh, and it's a great salt. Uh, it's just, um, I, I wanted to do the, the Seachem line of stuff to see how that, how that fares for me. Uh, the Seachem Salinity, the salt that they sell, uh, is a little more rich with uh, trace elements and other little things. Uh, plus, I'm um, dosing their Aqua Vitro line, which is an exclusive to brick and mortar stores. You can't buy it online. So that's pretty cool. So that, you know, helps me support the local, LFZ, local LFS of which I work at too. So you know the discount comes in handy as well but uh enough of me talking uh we'll start down inside the sump and stuff and i'll explain to y'all what i'm thinking about doing down there along with what's going on in there so sit back relax eat some popcorn drink some great kool-aid and eat some tortilla chips have a taco whatever enjoy the video um also uh before we get into that make sure you go and like uh, the Aquatic Support Systems Facebook page. Uh, lots of cool things going on over there. Also, make sure that you go on like Fish Paradise on Facebook as well. Uh, especially if you live in the DFW, DFW area. Uh, so we're going to start doing um, uh, uh, like promotions and stuff on there. So uh, promotions that you'll only be able to take advantage of if you're a part of our Facebook group. So make sure you go and do that and make sure you check out aquatic support systems also make sure you go and check out all of the aquatic support systems people's youtube channel that makes sense or am i just running and surfing yeah um yeah go like all their youtube channels all the links are down inside the description guys so it's really easy for you all you have to do is click on it and hit the like button uh, as far as a giveaway, I have some ideas of what I want to do. Now that I'm into reefing, I can actually accommodate everybody in the hobby. So whether you do freshwater planted tanks or you reef, it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the giveaway will include something for anybody in the hobby, uh, not just freshwater now. So that's pretty cool. So stay on the lookout for that. I'm thinking hmm, maybe next week or the week after. Uh, still have some... Uh, sponsors for that in the work so uh, stay tuned for that let's get this video on the road all right guys so first and foremost here is what I'm dosing so far there's still one aqua vitro product that I need to get but so far I'm dosing ions which is a magnesium supplement calcification which is the calcium and fuel which is like a it's basically like a, a little food type deal uh, that ignites coral growth it says um, but the ion the ions it raises magnesium and maintains strontium and boron and it doesn't contain any ammonia oh it's not even in there and it doesn't contain any ammonia uh, so that's pretty cool I dose 12 milliliters of that per 60 gallons I do that twice a week on the calcium uh, it's calcification. It raises and maintains calcium and accelerates coral growth. It says I do 16.8 milliliters of that per 60. Uh, and then the fuel, which we just went over, I do 14 milliliters. Uh, and I do that probably three or four times a week with that one. Uh, the Kent Microvert that you see right here, uh, I do that. Probably just as much as I as I use the fuel here. Uh, and if you haven't if you haven't tried any of these guys, they're uh, they're really awesome. I really love this fuel. Uh, <clears throat> I was dosing only microvert uh, before to feed my corals, um, but I added that fuel. And you should. I mean, I wish I could have had a before and after picture because 
the polyp extension that I saw whenever I dosed fuel. And guys, I'm not sponsored by Seachem at all. So don't think that I'm just trying to wait, raise awareness for them. I'm not. Uh, it's just what I'm using. It's just the results that I've had. So the results that I had with fuel so far have been astonishing and amazing. I, I can't. I can't even fathom how to tell y'all the results that I've had with fuel. Um, as far as calcium and magnesium, the, the dosing anyway, uh, you know, I'm just trying to maintain my levels. I'm not trying to raise them up, so I can't tell you how fast that works or anything. Uh, as far as my sump, everything is still the same. Uh, just overflows into the filter sock. I change out the filter sock probably three times a week. Uh, just to maintain water quality. My Bubble Magnus Curve 5 uh, is working awesome. Uh, it collects some pretty, pretty stinky, yucky muck, and it's running like a champ. I love this protein skimmer. Uh, it's sleek, it's stylish, it looks good, and the best thing about it is you can take the whole thing apart and clean every inch of it. These little thumb screws here, little Teflon thumb screws, you unscrew them, you can take the whole cone of the skimmer out, you can take the pump out, you can take the bubble plate, you can take the diffuser plate out, uh, you can clean the neck, the neck or the cup comes out, and you can take these things out to clean them. The, the adjustment for the water level along with the um, Venturi valve. Uh, the whole protein skimmer can come apart and you can clean every inch of it. I love this protein skimmer. It's an awesome, awesome protein skimmer. Uh, and that's the only thing that's in that chamber besides the heater. Um, the sponge that you can see right there, the black sponge. Uh, I clean that probably once a week. My Kimi Pure. I'm actually going to go to Kimi Pure Elite instead of Blue. Uh, I've read a few things that the Blue can strip trace elements out of your water um, whether or not that's true uh, I'd rather I'd rather just use the elite other than the blue um, and then I have my Rio 20 2500 pumping water back to the tank you can see my two bulkheads there uh, there's my two power bars and check out my deep sand bed guys check this out those dark spots that you see right there, that's rock. And it's just as white as the day that I set it up. And you can see up in the front here, <clears throat> now we're starting to go up to the tank, but uh, you can see up in the front here, there's all kinds of life, all kinds of burrows and tunnels and just all kinds of action going on. Uh, in my opinion, deep sand bed, it's a must. You know, I'm not saying you can't do a reef tank without it. I'm definitely not that experienced to say something like that. But I am happy I did a deep sand bed because, I mean, everything that I've read about it, everything I've watched about it, and now everything I've done, uh, I can't imagine not having a deep sand bed. It's a great nutrient export. You have anaerobic, anaerobic areas inside the deep sand bed. Uh, so it's just another way to take nutrients out of your system, nitrate. Um, all kinds of critters down in there. I uh, used half, or not half, but most of it was uh, just a dry sand uh, that was, you know, a small, a small size of dry sand. And then I got like, I think 20 to 40 pounds of live sand uh, from Fish Paradise, and then I added that in there. All my lock, all my rock was live. Here's one of my yellow clown gobies. Check this guy out. I like how they just perch. Look at them. <laughs> See one of the hermits right there. I just saw the Halloween hermit. I don't know where he went though. But yeah, so as far as corals go. I uh, got lots of zoanthids. You won't be able to see a lot of them because they're up on top of this rock right in front of here. I uh, got lots of coralline algae going. I uh, can't wait till it starts hitting the glass and, you know, starts covering. I want the whole back glass covered. I want the whole overflow covered. And uh, I want all my rocks to be covered as well. But you can see these zoanthids here, those pink ones that you see. Uh, those 
actually grow the fastest for me. Uh, you can see my bubble coral. Uh, they're not, everything's not all opened up like it normally is because I literally turned on the lights like 15 minutes ago to make this video. Um, my lights come on at about 4.30 and go off at 12.30 at night uh, so I can enjoy my tank while I'm home and it's not on and running while I'm at work. But uh, there's my bubble coral. There's my sun coral. This guy is doing awesome. There's, I think, five or six new polyp or new heads forming on here. Uh, there's a couple up at the top. Where am I? There's a couple up at the top right there, and there's a couple down there. And then you can see right there in the middle, there's a couple going up there. There's like five or six new heads. That's really exciting. I love sun coral. Um, and then I have my Rasta zoanthids. I can't wait until I get this filter so y'all can see the colors that I see. Uh, that's, that's the only thing about reefs that I don't like so far is not being able to share it on video <laughs> without a filter. Uh, there's my Christmas Montipora right there. Uh, it's green with red polyps. Here is a bird's nest, and this is one of the pieces I cannot wait to show when I have that filter because it is so vibrant green, it's just unbelievable. Uh, right behind there, you can see another SPS. That's another bird's nest. Uh, it's a little bit darker green. And then behind that with the flowiness is an encrusting gorgonia. Here are my two Onyx Picasso clownfish. They're doing awesome. I uh, can't wait to see which one is going to end up being the, being the female so I can actually give them their names. Uh, I think I've already found them a name. Uh, here's my rose bubble tip. Uh, I wish this guy was opened up for y'all because this thing is just magnificent whenever it's fully open and it's all bubbly. Um, and mine actually, it does bubble. Um, so I got, well, all of ours at the store have bubbles on them. So I kind of figured the bubbles would stay, but, uh, and they did. So, but it's not fully open. I also have a porcelain crab that you can kind of see. It's right there, right above my finger. Uh, some people call them anemone crabs. You can see another yellow goby right there. Just perching on one of my Montes. I have two Montes there. They're actually red. The one that he's sitting on and then there's one right above it. Uh, those guys are doing well. You can see my Galaxia coral in the back with those big long feeding tentacles. Um, yeah, I had to put him far, far, far in the back because those feeding tentacles get really long at night. Or, yeah, at night. Right there I have a plating um, Montipora. It's all green with green polyps. You can see it right there. There's a snail hanging out on it. And then we'll go down to my torch. Uh, when this guy opens up, it is enormous. Uh, whenever I got it, it was about the size that you can see there. Uh, and it's probably tripled in size since I've been keeping it. <clears throat> and then down here is my branching frog spawn. Now, the reason the frog spawn is so cool is because the branching, the branching one, not the wall, but the branching frog spawn is so cool because it cannot be collected anymore. So if you have the opportunity to get some branching frog spawn, specifically the green with purple or the mix of the green, purple, and blue, scoop some up, guys. I'm telling you because pretty soon the prices are just going to go way, 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 way up. And they already have. Um... You can expect to pay per head probably anywhere in the range of $60 to $75 per head. And pretty soon you're not even going to be able to buy it without dropping a C note. It's just that simple. Uh, it, it, it cannot be collected anymore. Uh, once most of the fish retailers find out about that, uh, they're going to start holding on to it and the prices are going to skyrocket. So get it while you can. Uh, I know up at Fish Paradise, we aren't selling it right now. We're letting it you know all grow out and 
so we can have plenty for everybody. Uh, moving along, you can see my metallic orange mushroom. Again, this is another one of the corals that I cannot wait to have that filter for because when I say it's metallic orange, I mean it is metallic orange and it's just beautiful and it's like four times the size it is when, when it's fully opened up. Uh, right below that, you can see my kryptonite candy coral. Uh, the green on this guy is just fantastic. Uh, and this I got, the, he's actually splitting. You can see, well, maybe you can't. Oh well. Uh, it has two mouths now and it's about to separate. And you can see some of my, some more zoanthids. Uh, like I said, those pink ones right there are the, are the fastest growing so far. Uh, but once those rastas take off, that's going to be awesome. I was hoping to get this whole branch-like structure filled with uh, rastas. And there's one other zoanthid I'd really like to have. But uh, got to wait for some more money. There's a better shot of that porcelain crab. That guy is really cool. Uh, my clownfish haven't started hosting the anemone yet. <clears throat> Look at all that coralline, guys. They haven't started hosting the uh, anemone yet, um, so that's kind of a bummer, but they'll eventually get in there. Um, I heard it just happens overnight, so to speak. <laughs> you can see my sand sifting starfish right there. That guy does work. And I have a graveyard on both sides uh, for my hermit crabs whenever they outgrow their current shells. Uh, you can see one already took one of the new shells. Look at that right there. That's a new shell that I just put in yesterday. And I have another graveyard right over here. So we'll step back a little bit so you can get a full picture of the reef. Uh, and this is another shot that I cannot wait until I have that filter because, oh my God, it's mind blowing the colors that you get off of this thing. And... I just can't get enough of it. It's so much fun. Um, but that's all I have for y'all today, guys. Um, you can see my LEDs are still doing good. This is a full spectrum. It has the two different kinds of blues, UV, white, green, red. Uh, I can grow any coral I want with this LED fixture. And if you're interested in one, they're only $295. So fully programmable. You can set it up with... Um, is it 395 something like that um, fully programmable you can set it up with thunderstorms cloud cover uh, you can set up full daylight cycles moon cycles all that stuff and it's been growing some really good corals we use these exclusively inside of our store minus a few t5 fixtures um, we actually use them above our acro tanks and we get really solid growth in them so uh, it's a great fixture but other than that, guys, that's all I have for y'all today. Hope y'all enjoyed looking at my reef. If I can get it to focus here. There we go. Uh, stay tuned for a video for whenever I get that filter. Um, oh, I forgot these polyps down here. This is like GSP, um, green star polyps, except it's pink with uh, green mouths. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's not, I mean, that's a fast-growing coral. And, I mean, it's nothing special. I mean, it's really common. Uh, but it's still cool nonetheless But uh, that's all I have for you. Like I said guys, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video uh, Be sure to rate comment and subscribe. Let me know what y'all are thinking. This is what I'm doing This is what I've done. Happy fish keeping and stay true to the hobby. Adios Oh And if you watch to this part, I wanted to let y'all know that I named my rose bubble tip anemone Harold So if you got this far put Harold down in the comments Peace.